Omega Custom Tackle. I'd like to talk to you today about a new product from Omega called the Shaky Foot. A few things I like about this jig are the wide gap hook, the football style head, the screw lock keeper. A few places I like to fish this jig is TVA lakes, rock piles, ledges, any type of offshore structure you can find. Also works well around riprap, boat docks, any type of uh, fish holding areas like that. The way I like to rig this bait is with a uh, Yamamoto Sanko. Just take it here, screw it a couple times onto this screw lock keeper. Feed it back through the worm. Bury the hook in there. I like to throw this rig, cast it out there, let it fall to the bottom. It'll fall to the bottom, kind of like this land on the bottom and you can see this tail it actually starts shaking while it's on the bottom it causes some finicky bass to bite another good area to throw this jig is where you would throw the uh, Derek Remitz signature series football jig this jig will uh, pick up a few of the finicky fish after uh, you throw that big football jig I like to throw this rig on a uh, seven foot medium heavy baitcaster rod with 10 pound seaguar fluorocarbon it actually uh, is invisible underwater so it uh, get a few more bites with that seaguar. So next time you're out fishing, try to throw this jig, throw this rig, and I guarantee you'll catch a few more fish and win a few more turns. Hey guys, we're down here on Pickwick Lake in Florence, Alabama. Uh, we were down here covering the PAA event, which went pretty well. After the tournament was over, after the final weigh-in, John and I came out. We were messing around with the new shaky head football jig. And uh, we were throwing, I was using a uh, Yamamoto 5-inch Senko and uh, 5 16 Omega jig and caught them pretty good. And John whacked an absolute beast smallmouth. And all these fish we're catching are smallmouth. Uh, he caught a beast on a 5-inch uh, grub on that, that same shaky football jig. So we thought we'd come out this morning before we hit the road and head back to the house and uh, Try to catch a few fish for you. They're not pulling any current, so it's probably going to be a little bit tougher. But we caught some good three and four pound uh, smallie. Seemed like yesterday. Anytime it, it, it's just any type of fishing at all. Anytime there's an irregularity, it doesn't matter if it's a grass line, a tree row, a bluff, a bank that has a little point uh, with chunk rock that sticks out on it. Anything in a regular feature is always a key place to get a bite. As you can see right here, there's a couple little points. And uh, it seemed like yesterday, that's where, or last night, that's where we got good as well. Unfortunately, we didn't have a camera in the boat, so we didn't get those uh, on film. But uh, hopefully we'll catch a few here this morning. That's a good thing about this bait. You can use a little bit larger bait. It's got that, uh, it's got the football style head on it, so it comes through rock really well. The Savior, I really like to use if I'm fishing around grass. Uh, or lay downs, or, or it comes through rock really well too, and it's a stand up head. But the, uh, the football jig, it, it's a little bit different creature, and I, I use them both. Uh, this one's got wide gap hooks, so it holds a little bit bigger bait, like that uh, Senko right there. It just it seems to hold it a little bit better. <laughs> it's got to be a smallmouth. He is just tugging. I can't get him up. Drag a little bit. These smallmouth are just. Look at this. You never know how big they are, but you get him up. And he is just dogging. <laughs> the old shaky football head. It's probably a big old grub. Oh no, good smallmouth. Look at that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Oh yeah. Big old Tennessee River smallmouth. At the roof of the mouth. That is beautiful right there. Oh, 
that was one of those cases that's an irregular feature right there like we were just talking about there's a little point right here uh, I just started marking some bait on the graph so keep your eyes on the graph saw some bait moving out here what we're doing is we're throwing up close to the uh, close to the wall up there and there is a little current there's not near as much current as there was last night uh, but we're kind of uh, we're cast up there with that shaky head football that thing stands the worm will stand straight up so we're kind of bouncing it with the current and hopping it down these ledges. We just caught that right there. So uh, that's kind of what they're feeding on. We just had a bite set the hook and hooked him. So uh, we're just trying to uh, mimic the prey that the fish are feeding on. And they're feeding on little bluegill, sunfish, perch, whatever. So uh, a little uh, five inch Yamamoto grub is doing the job. This is the perfect situation. We just had a cold front roll through. It's cold, the old snot box is running, and uh, there's a bird right there. That's always a good sign. But uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to hop this thing down some ledges. Uh, there's some shelves at the ends of these bluffs here. And uh, hopefully we can pick up the fish or something. Little guy. Peanut. A little large mouth. Turn my bait up. There we go. That's not what we're looking for. A lot of times when you throw up on the bank, you'll catch those little bank runners like that. And as you work the bait down, and when you get more familiar with the lake and you spend a lot of time fishing these ledges, you'll know the productive ledges and you can go right in there. You can lay the bait exactly where it needs to be to get those bites. And it's a dynamite pattern when fishing gets real tough. Like I said, uh, it's, the temperature's dropped, it is, it's cold. The fishing's really slowed down, so that's that's when a technique like this. Put a few more fish in the boat, or you know, if you're tournament fishing, it, it might be that, that one extra fish. There's another one, uh, he was a little bit deeper. A little bit better. Keeper. Oh, there goes my Senko. That's what happens. <laughs> Gary will be held. Be still, be still, be still, be still. Hey. He's still on fire. Hold on. Be free in just a second. I promise. Yeah, he'd be a nice little keeper. We just pulled up. We just started this uh, technique and we've had a couple bites real quick. So uh, that just goes to show you. I'll show you real quick how we rig this bait. Okay, this is the uh, quarter ounce shaky foot. And we have the easy load spring on there. And I'll show you how I like to rig this. Take your bait. Get it started. I want to make sure you, you get that uh, corkscrew right in the center of the worm so it doesn't come through the side. Screw it down there to the head. What I like to do is find the seam and run it straight through the seam. It helps eliminate line twist if you do that. Pop it all the way through just like that. And I like to take it, pinch it up, and just skin hook it. Now that bait's ready to go. Technique wise, you just have to kind of figure out what the uh, what the fish want. Well, I'm just what I'm doing right here is this, this bait stands up almost straight 12 o'clock in the water, and I'm just kind of lifting, lifting it off the ledge, letting it go down to the next ledge. And uh, a lot of times those fish won't feel the bite; they'll just come right by as it's falling. And you really have to pay attention. You got to watch that line.